I suppose to to define it, I have to tell you the story of it and how it came about. Mm. Um, my my work is you know inspired consciously and subconsciously through uh through my surfing basically and and where that brings me around the coastline and just the things I see and the visual experiences that uh, that gives me. Um, so I suppose I think it was around first year in art college when uh, surfing kind of became my subject matter. Um, and it would have worked very representational, uh, very, you know, as you see it sort of pieces, working from magazines and photographs and the likes. Um, and I moved moved quickly on from that into more abstract representation. But uh, e- even at that stage, you know, I, I really didn't feel I was communicating the aspect of the of, of what surfing was um, to the viewer, you know. Uh, I wasn't happy with it myself. So kind of along the same lines, uh, my, my surfing started to develop uh, as as my painting was developed, and you know, I started them both kind of when I was around fifteen, full time properly, you know. Um, so kind of as the two came along, you know, I got a better understanding of surfing, what it was about, and I got a better understanding of paint and how to use it. And it was around that time I developed my wet technique. I was working with uh, with acrylic paints, very wet, very loose, um, and really I wanted to convey the notion of water and how water moves. So that was the initial starting point. So what, rather than moving straight on to surfing and what surfing's about, I started off with the water. So I broke it down to the basics and the understanding of how the water moves. Um, and that's how my wet pieces came about. So basically, you know, I worked horizontally on a primed board with these acrylics, very, very wet. And I got these images to the stage where I wanted them. And while they were still wet, while they were there, I captured the image using a camera um, and produced prints then, printed uh, photographs of the, of the paintings. And that, that opened up a whole new world for me in terms of how I could work, you know, and uh, I kind of just went from there on to kind of producing, using that technique, that wet technique, to uh, to convey some of, some of the energy of surfing, you know, so and some of the emotions uh, for the surfer, not just the water and how the water moved, but uh, put in some of the emotions of uh, the adrenaline, the sort of crazy sort of calm you have when you're out there, even when everything's going mental and... Just uh, that that sense of movement and power and energy and all the things it stirs up with inside you, you know. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's, uh, you know, if you wanted, you could call it surf art. But the thing about it is I'm depicting, um, I'm depicting a place, you know, in the water, in the wave that that's so alien to somebody who doesn't surf that it's not surf art at all. You know, it's uh, it's just another place where they can where they can go and they look at the work and experience it that way. So um, I suppose it, it's universal, uh, the work, you know. I, li- I like to think of my subconscious as a fuel tank, you know, and when I'm out surfing and when I'm out looking at nature and looking at little small things and sizing them up, looking at, you know, the big surroundings and the water, how it's moving, the wind, the spray, off the sea, all, all of those things, you know, they all load in here. It all goes into my subconscious, you know, and it fills up and it fills up. And uh, from that... That's where the work comes from. It feeds through, you know. It's um, it, I, I'm like I'm like a filter for the imagery, you know. Um, as a visual artist, I try and communicate all all that I see and all that I take in, tr- as best I can through my own medium, through painting and my own style. The the transition from land into water, you know, as as you surf, as you come along, even though it's freezing and you're wearing a wetsuit or whatever else. It, the transition becomes seamless almost. You don't even notice it, you know, that, that passing over from one sort of area to another. Um, so y- you've this sort of calm that comes about when you're in the water and things are moving about. And, uh, you know, when you're paddling out, there's the, there's the anticipation. You're kind of excited, you know, because you can see the waves and you're getting out to them. And that first duck dive, the duck dive is where you, you dive your board underneath the wave the crashing wave so that um, it doesn't hammer you back into the beach. <laughs> and uh, as you're coming up, you've, you've caught the inside of the wave, the power in there. You get caught in that stream and it shoots you up behind the wave. And that, that sort of, uh, it's, it's the first feeling of speed you get as you're paddling out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, the next one is when you're teetering on the brink of, uh, you know, whatever size wave it is, it doesn't matter, just on the brink of it. And then you go to your feet and you just take off. That, uh, that, that sort of acceleration, you know, and the feeling of the water underneath on your feet, you know, on the board, just uh, you feel really close to the wave, you know, and then, of course, the movement there and that, that sort of thing. So best I can describe it, I just try it, I suppose, is the best thing I could say. You're out in the water, there's lots of 
big waves moving around your seals or dolphins or whatever you know other surfers and uh you've got this insane sort of calm you know you get into a rhythm you get working in wave after wave you just get this sort of calm you know and trying to convey that and i suppose the otherworldliness as well with the work you know we we have such a beautiful coastline in ireland it's amazing you know and not just the scenery not just the cliffs or the waves or the sunsets sunrises even just the history of some of the places we surf you know you've castles on the shoreline you've uh, just an amazing amount of history and heritage as well Ireland's pretty unique in that and the sense of exploration as well you know I mean there's still waves in Ireland that people aren't surfing you you know in some of them you access them through a field with a bull or you know there's uh, just these scenarios that you probably wouldn't find yourself in uh, if you were doing doing anything else you know for me it, first first of all it's home you know so before I kind of interact with it in any other level it's home, you know, it's family, it's friends, it's a community. And then after that, you know, uh, when I kind of move on to, you know, what, I, what I'm working out with my, with my artwork, it's, uh, it's inspiration. Um, it's uh, even with the surfing, it's so just ideal for surfing. And as, you know, as an artist, it's perfect. There's the right amount of peace and quiet. I'm right beside the sea. I can surf and then I can go into the studio. And the two blend so well here. It really works. And I suppose it's just, uh, well, it blows you away, you know, you get, uh, you get good days, you get bad days, but they're all amazing, you know, they're all powerful in their own way, you know, even if it's just the weather, it's the energy, you know, we're right out on the tip here in Acre, we get it, uh, we get it first if it's coming in from the Atlantic. I, I feel good inside, you know, I feel uh, healthy, you know, and uh, inside and out, and uh, I just, uh, just try and live a good life, you know, do, do what I consider to be the right thing, and I just just hope it all works out, you know. <laughs> As I said, you know, you you realize your your insignificance, I suppose, in a way, you know. So, yeah.